The latest discovery of possible grave sites at a residential school in Saskatchewan has been described as difficult news by the Prime Minister, but it does not come as a surprise to many residential school survivors. The Star Blanket Cree Nation announced last week that ground-penetrating radar has identified more than 2,000 potential targets at the former Labret Residential School. As more residential school sites and potential unmarked graves continue to be found, one former site is looking to repurpose its grounds for learning, healing and truth and reconciliation. The former site of the Mohawk Institute Residential School in Brantford, Ontario, is being turned into an exhibition to further tell the stories of those who had lost their voices and, for some, their lives. Well, joining us now to tell us more about this is the Woodland Cultural Center's Executive Director, Ms. Janice Montier. Ms. Montier, welcome back to Forum Daily. Thank you for having me. So let's start with last week's discovery at the former Librette Residential School. How have the survivors and First Nation communities that you speak to been reacting to this? Well, I think it's definitely something that we knew uh, was going to be discovered at residential school sites across this country. Um, but again, it's the numbers are um, the thing that's really hard to, I think, come to terms with is as many that they're suggesting that um, have been found of interest in Star Blanket, um, you know, to over 2,000. That's, it really, really shows um, just how many lives were lost of children who attended these institutions across this country and with it not being reported or not being uh, acknowledged. And as you say, survivors expect to hear a lot more about grave sites being found at former sites, uh, former residential school sites. So uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the importance of this search and uh, how it's going to help Canada in its efforts toward reconciliation? Well, I think it's important that these searches continue to happen. We need to understand the truth um, and we need to also bring um, some closure to our communities about the tragedy around uh, losing children that went to these institutions and really to, I think, acknowledge just how horrific the living conditions were um, and the treatment of children, of Indigenous children that attended these institutions. Definitely. Now, uh, we do know the former site of the Mohawk Residential School is being repurposed, so let's talk a little bit more about that. Uh, what phase is it now in its development, and what will this site look like once it's complete? So we're currently in phase three of our restoration work, so we're um, making it sure that it's accessible. So we're installing an elevator. We are um, ensuring that you know, all the masonry is repaired and windows are repaired. So that's sort of the phase we are in now. Um, and that will continue um, well into the spring. Um, at the same time, we are starting phase four in a few weeks. Um, that is the interpretation phase. So really ensuring that when we do reopen in late fall of 2024, uh, visitors will be able to experience uh, what life was like as a child attending one of these institutions. Um, it'll be a guided tour um, of the space and really the artifact itself is the building. It's really going to be focusing on the stories and testimonials we've heard from survivors over you know, several years, guiding the narrative uh, and the script of the experience. Um, so we hope that you know, when visitors come, they'll come see the rooms as they once were um, when it was running as a, as a residential school. Really looking forward to the opening of this exhibition, Ms. Montier. Now, uh, what are you hoping people will take away from or feel after visiting this exhibition? I hope that when people come through this, it, it, that they really, truly understand um, not only the historic uh, aspect of it, but also to really understand what it was like to be a child. I think when we hear the stories, you see the survivors are now elderly um, and older. Um, it's hard to imagine what they're telling you um, to know what it would have been like to be five years old uh, and the, what the living conditions were and what happened to them. We have, you know, several abuses um, that were done to these children is unfathomable to, I think, a lot of people. And so we really hope that people understand the truth first and, and are really open to hearing those truths because they are hard to hear, but we have to ensure that we know the truth before we can do any sort of reconciliation work um, before we, before we move forward. 
stories that need to be told. All right, Ms. Montier, thank you again for joining us today on Forum Daily. Thank you.